Okay, welcome back to that IT show. We have another episode for you today. This time it's going to be about PowerShell and Microsoft and some of the things that I recently encountered in the combination of both. So, hello. So, you have been paying attention to your software side and uh, <laughs> been dealing with uh, Microsoft and the uh, thing that they call the shell scripting and okay. the, the consistencies of uh, PowerShell. Oh, you want to go there? No, uh, but I'm just I'm just mentioning because oh. you did it you, in the last episode. You did it to me, so I need to mention the consistencies. Oh, <laughs> I'm writing this down. We are coming back to this. We are circling back to that. That's popular to say today. So let's see how to keep it simple and keep it simple. Uh, keep it simple. It's not going to happen. So, so the the key, the key is uh, Gambit. How it works in the Microsoft world? Oh Lord, can you make anything less complicated, please? Uh, yes, so uh, from what I understand and pro what you told me, you tried uh, sh uh, trying to try to uh, test the consistencies between different versions of Microsoft Windows Server uh, in front of the students in a live demo without trying it first. You made such a backward way of introducing this. It's incredible. That's only something that you can do. No, actually, let, let's me, let me give you a little bit of a background to what we are discussing here. So. Uh, I did a fair share of PowerShell courses in the past 10 or so years, and uh, locally in the company, I'm probably uh, one of the few people who really work with PowerShell on a daily basis. And I'm very much like the idea of using PowerShell. I commanded Microsoft when they introduced it in, what was it, 2008 or seven or nine or whatever. It was actually my ticket back to uh, doing Microsoft Windows administration because I was kind of frustrated doing everything manually. And coming from the Linux world, as we both do, we kind of like go, we've gotten used to the fact of uh, having the capability to do shell scripting. So when they introduced PowerShell, I was very happy, Kemper. So that's the that's the first part of the story. The second part of the story, we make an effort uh, to teach our students the basics of PowerShell over the course of ma multiple courses that are related both to Microsoft administration and uh, Microsoft and VM vir virtualization because that kind of brings their focus of just purely typing some commands into practical focus. And on uh, our intro course uh, for the for one, one of the Microsoft courses, first one in a row, we have a lecture about introduction to PowerShell, then we have a lecture about Active Directory, and then we have, of course, the combination of both. And to cut, to, to kind of like cut to the chase and then explain everything that happened afterwards, I think I made a good mess of uh, uh, turning out, uh, I, I, let's, let's call it this way, how to be a complete pillock in front of your students without being, to, being the one to blame for anything. That's what the episode should be called. Because uh, I, uh, what I did on that lecture, I did dozens of times before, if it worked perfectly every single time, I have, have to admit that. And I was actually able to repeat that um, once more in, uh, in the same environment. Okay, so it wasn't something uh, on a different server, blah, 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 virtualized. But basically, uh, both students and myself, uh, we got a, a first very annoyed, and afterwards we had a laugh of our lives. So that's that's the real story, not the um, Hollywood movie version of you. Yes, but I would start with uh, never ever do live demos as live demos. I always do live demos, yes, and I'm yes, going yes, to keep yes, on yes, doing yes, them. Yes and no, but uh, don't do live demos on the Microsoft new versions of Microsoft products. Because uh, that's very uh, that's actually a very fair point. Because uh, consistency of Microsoft, uh, to be completely fair, consistency of Microsoft across the Windows Server versions, from two, 2012 to 2022, two. right now, is being steadily uh, falling, and I think that. You mean Pro consistency in software quality? That's what uh, we're no, discussing. Consistency in everything working. It's not about software quality. Uh, 
Uh, let, let, let me uh, state my case. Okay. Active Directory exists for the last 25-ish Five years. Five -ish years. Yes. Uh, okay, let's let's uh, reconsider that. Let's say that uh, Active Directory, as you know it, cons uh, is uh, came up with the Windows Server 2000. Mm -hmm. So, and NT4. Let's let's not talk yeah. about domain in, in NT4 because That's it's 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 extremely uh, it's uh, entirely different. So we are not going to uh, talk about it. Water. So, 20, 20 issues. I cannot understand how could it possibly happen that the newest version of something that old. Uh, comes with the functionality that is so broken that you are unable to add users. So th th this is mind-boggling. Yeah, I had, I, I, I kind of like had a mental dizzy episode. I was completely like uh, catatonic for a couple of seconds on that lecture, unable to understand what just transpired in front of my eyes because it was uh, very disappointing, very surprising, and very worrying at the same time. Yeah, so basically you ran out of uh, resource IDs on a domain controller. That, that was, was freshly installed. That was freshly installed, and it was the only domain controller in Active Directory. Yes. So basically the uh, PDC uh, or the uh, RID master uh, role was lagging behind so much that it wasn't able to provide the resource IDs for the new, new uh, users. Okay, on a virtual machine, Freshly installed, fully updated, four and cores, eight gigabytes of memory, running on an NVMe SSD on the VMware uh, hypervisor. Yes, but did you try to create a million users? Uh, uh, no, uh, obviously I wasn't able to <laughs> after that, uh, okay, okay, which it should be able to do. Yes, so the idea of something like this happening shouldn't be possible. Uh, not after t 20 years of uh, development. Mm -hmm. So... Let's talk about now. We have set uh, set the, the stage. stage. Mm -hmm. Let's now talk about the scripting and how the scripting should be working, and how the script is no, uh, scripting is not working, and how the scripting is getting broken in Windows. Because let me just uh, create my own hypothesis right now. I think that Microsoft is right now trying to do the, what Microsoft does best. They have created a product that works, mm -hmm. PowerShell. and now they are experimenting because they are trying to introduce the new Windows terminal new uh, version of distributing packages we get. .NET Core. Uh, they are introducing .NET Core, and they are trying to uh, create the artificial uh, competition between teams inside Microsoft on who is going to get better in uh, providing a backend for uh, installation of everything. So basically, they created the whole subset of backend solutions to things that didn't need to be solved instead of concentrating on PowerShell. You mean the good old left hand doesn't know what the right hand is doing scenario? Yes, but at the same time, uh, the company is growing the middle hand and the upper hand. And now we are creating an octopus, but no, 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 nobody, got the, no, nobody got the memo. No, nobody got the memo, but the metaphor is there. Yes. Yeah, that's good. So basically what I try to do is super simple, and I've done it on every single one of my PowerShell courses that I did in the past 10 or so years. So I did it probably, I don't know. 20 times or so and I did it for my customers as well for testing environments many times or so I created a test file with uh, some entries as uh, comma separated values and I created a PowerShell script that loops through that CSV and creates users in Active Directory specifically this was on Windows Server 2022 okay so I gave my explanations to all the students. I've shown them some basics of PowerShell before and Active Directory, and I told them how to kind of combine that, how that's a valid use case for doing uh, using PowerShell. I told them that the most common use case for this is testing environment when you're uh, creating a test domain so that you can work with some test data and stuff like that. For companies who deal with testing environments, this is probably the most natural scenario of things to do. It doesn't really matter what the authentication backend is. Is it pure LDAP Active Directory or something else? That's beside the point. So there I was proudly explaining to my students how PowerShell is great, how Active Directory works beautifully, and how this demo is going to be kick-ass to kind of like explain to them why but one uh, is like a match made in heaven for the other. And after a couple of hundred users, my script crashed. Okay. You're going to see the results of that uh, in the video.
I got so f I was flabbergasted. That's the expression that I was uh, that I was looking for earlier. I could not believe for the life of me what's happening in front of my eyes. I rebooted the server. Tried again. No, uh, it still gave me uh, the same error. I went to Event Viewer and discovered, as you mentioned earlier, that basically the read was broken. I was left speechless. And as a true, let's say, true Linux dude, Unix dude of the past, uh, that's, the, that's the moment where spite came into play. And I said to my students, uh, if this doesn't work, on an older version of server, something like 2012 or 2012 R2, I am going to like rip out my own hand. And in front of them, I had a template, I think, of Windows 2012. I d deployed it from a clone, uh, configured Active Directory, rewrote the same script or copied it there, ran it, and it finished no problem whatsoever. Point proven. So basically coming back to your point, the quality of software diminishes over time in some use cases. I think that even if even if I tried to be more fair than I could, I think that that applies to some of the some pieces of Microsoft software heavily. And then because my spite wasn't done, because just like you, I am a sarcastic uh, dude, let's call it that way. I would call myself differently, but let's stick to that. Um, I said, let me create this script on one of the Linux machines and show you how Linux does it as well. So uh, the script was probably, let's say, 50% 50 in length compared to PowerShell. It's okay. way simpler. And what actually ended up being one of the biggest laughing stocks was the uh, speed comparison between the processes because um, i tried to create hundreds and hundreds of users just for the purposes of creating hundreds and hundreds of users on powershell in active directory and in linux i just wanted to show them what the idea of using for each loop is or something like that and wh what the combination of ad and powershell can give to you if you know how to use them uh, the the first script on Windows Server 2022 ran for, I don't know, a minute or so. Then it crashed. Then I spent next 10, 15 minutes trying to fix it. To no avail. 
then deployment of 2012, a couple of minutes for uh, cloning from a template, uh, Active Directory installation, uh, copying the script. That's like 10 minutes of work, no, nothing major. I uh, ran the script there, worked perfectly, created all of the users that I wanted it to create, but it ran four minutes. And again, as my spite was growing towards the end of the lecture, in which I made a complete asshat out of myself, by blindly trusting uh, certain brands, something that I mentioned uh, uh, across multiple episodes never to do, hence my reason why I said it, among other reasons. Uh, then I ran the same thing in Linux, which finished in a couple of seconds. So there are more than a few takeaways to take from this, but uh, you were you were not present on this lecture. You are just hearing me uh, like a second from like secondhand description of what happened. So I want to hear your reaction. I am going to start with the probably the most disappointing one. Uh, I must say that everything you said makes sense to me, and it is something that. I would expect uh, to happen uh, in a line de live demo on a Microsoft uh, environment. So, meh. Because I, I'm not sure that I know of anything that I did with the students when it comes to Microsoft that was completely consistent across uh, every machine. Uh, let me set up, uh, okay, let, let me talk about, I don't know, a normal regular group of students, it, we are talking about 20 or so people inside the, inside the environment. Environment is completely uh, template created, so every machine is, ex is exactly the same. Correct. Uh, it is running in the VMware, so uh, every machine is behaving uh, completely the same. Correct. And we are doing something like installation of uh, Active Directory. Mm -hmm. In a group of 20 people, usually I have one or two that are unable to create a, a domain for some reason or the other. Yeah, uh, I've seen that as well. Creation fails. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's probably somewhere around uh, two, two to three percent of people completely fail to create a domain from the first time. I have absolutely no, re no idea why. Mm -hmm. How can this even happen? Why is this happening? And then I need to debug in front of the students. I need to try to find what the solution is. And usually the best solution is just to revert to the snapshot and try to try again, and then it works. But for lab work, for practice work that you do, kind of like doing the troubleshooting is not necessarily bad. Of course, with, with the uh, caveat being that you kind of look like a you know, fool. Yes, but the problem is that you are doing something so simple and so basic that yes. it shouldn't fail any time uh, when, it's uh, when it's being done on the completely clean machine. Mm -hmm. I understand the reasons why it failed. I understand that they, they, you could debug it, you can try to find the troubleshooting steps, and you, could need, you need to basically read the logs and see what happened, but nothing should happen. Uh, there shouldn't be any conceivable uh, scenario in which uh, Active Directory creation... Unless it's hardware failure, of course. Yes, but in this particular environment, mm -hmm. there shouldn't be a scenario like this because it makes both Microsoft and me look bad. Mm -hmm. and, and, and to be clear, we don't want that. Yes, uh, we... I'm 
skeptical about what Microsoft does. But I think that basic things should always work in any uh, operating system because it's simple things, it's basic things. We are creating an environment, we're teaching people how to create the environment. This is one of the first uh, real exercises that we do on real actual uh, domain controllers. And we are trying to uh, explain to people how these things work. It is disconcerting that you uh, find out when you ha come in touch with the enterprise level Active Directory, uh, when you realize that this is not going to work all the time. And you need to explain to people, okay, uh, in the start of the lecture, I, I started, uh, I started starting the lectures with this is going to fail in some instances, mm -hmm. uh, we usually won't be able to understand why. Just revert the snapshot and try again. This insanity. Yeah, the, this uh, happens across multiple courses as well. Yes, okay, but th th there is also the exchange thing then when it says that uh, if it doesn't come up within, in, in a couple of minutes, just restart all the services and then uh, try again. Uh, hmm. Yes, this is this is the other the other uh, the other puzzling thing. But okay, this is one thing. So I was not surprised. I have seen this happen in the myriad of ways with the most basic things in the Active Directory. What is surprising me is, first, that it worked, because I know it worked. It's something that is always working. You didn't try to make, create anything out of the ordinary. <clears throat> Creating users should be always working. That's not level 100, that's level 10. Yes, two. Okay. You have an active directory, you should be able to create users. So it's it kind of a uh, thing that should be able to be done. But okay, let's ignore this uh, this for a bit. Uh, how this passed any tests? Because this wasn't an isolated incident. Again, I, I, I was able to repeat that. Yes, this is a repeatable incident. So it's an actual bug somewhere. How did this pass tests? Uh, what happened to the unit tests in Microsoft that enables uh, new versions of server to completely break uh, user creation? How is this possible? I'm not talking about how is this possible. I know how it's possible. It's software. Software breaks. Yes. N bugs, are, uh, bugs are normal. But I don't think that in this um, a phase of the a phase of the maturity and development maturity and development of the Windows Server. And in this uh, space and place in time, uh, this should happen because this is such a basic task that I suspect that Microsoft is not even, not even testing for it. Uh, you mean they presume that it works yes. and never tried it yes. with some new yes. version of .NET or yes. something? Yes, yes, yes. That actually sounds very reasonable as an assumption, I think. Yes, because I think that uh, they would check for it but they are so complacent about it working that nobody is bothering to do it. That's very disappointing, actually. Yes, but this, this, is, my, this is my only uh, logical Assumption. explanation for yeah. this happening. Okay, Okay. anything else to add? Um, I'm just going through, uh, I, I, my friend uh, AI and me, are to, <coughs> uh, we are talking about uh, differences between the, how PowerShell does things and how Bash does things in the Linux. And I'm going to do a little bit of, I'm going to ask you one thing. Okay. Do you think that we are going to end up with uh, Linux kernel running Windows applications? Okay. Or Windows kernel uh, running Linux applications? I think the first is more likely. Yes. The reason being because it's just better. Okay, and then are we going to stick with the PowerShell way of uh, object uh, passing uh, in, power, in scripting? Or are we going to keep with the text-based model of uh, whatever you see as the output of the command is going to be forwarded? I think both. It's not going to be one of them. I think both are going to remain. Because and it's good. Uh, <laughs> I have a problem with PowerShell. Okay. My problem is hidden objects. Um, mm, I, I think you you personally have a much bigger problem with PowerShell, PowerShell that's not hidden objects or something like that. It's the inconsistency of the arguments and dif difficulty of uh, understanding how a sane person th thought that something as straightforward as PowerShell can be so non-standardized in terms of the arguments and functionalities. For me, the first problem that I have is that uh, the idea of having 
separate commandlets come with different products and depend uh, you depend on a particular product being installed uh to have a commandlet available mm -hmm. this is one thing the other thing is that can be hidden, avoided hidden by properties, its, by hidden properties. yes yeah i agree uh, and the idea of me seeing something on the screen and then having to recheck if there is something else that i didn't see that is getting forwarded or is there is something that is not being forwarded but i can see it you mean like uh, filter everything versus a format list type of stuff yes stuff and, like then, and, yeah, and okay. then stuff not being seriable and uh, stuff not being able to uh, be, be be reused that's an excellent actually topic let, let me stop you there for a second um, i think you were witnessing this in uh, lifetime two, two weeks ago yes yes this this this, this, this when reason we were why i was why, why i was mentioning it you mean the, uh, the vhdx and yes. vhd yeah so uh, new vm powershell commandlet that microsoft uses on hyper v when you're creating new virtual machine accepts only vhdx file type so the later the newer version of the uh, virtual machine file it doesn't accept vhd put up put up the put up the example so people can see yeah okay okay Uh, so uh, the way in which you go around that problem, because you cannot work with the VHD as an object in that PowerShell, but you can work with the VHD as a string. So I went around that problem by basically doing, doing, inserting, doing what injecting, injecting a string inside a command line as an object by creating an object out of the string and then inserting this object inside instead of the other one. Oh, Lord, my head hurts. Yes. Let's say yes. But, uh, and I explained this to our students in real time in Discord, what I did. They were very thankful because we gave them the assignment to do that. Okay. That was a part of the assignment to do it that, uh, to uh, create a VM with VHD, not VHDX. It was actually a misspell. Okay. So it was kind of like an error on my part, but it was it turned out to be a very good misspell because we were able to kind of like give them further information about PowerShell so that they, they can learn something. And I got a lot of comments from the students about this. They were like, that was a very good explanation and thank you. So okay. there, there was something good to come out of that. Yes, but uh, the inconsistency of uh, different versions of uh, objects being able to be forwarded or not is big in uh, PowerShell. The other thing that I extremely dislike is that Microsoft is trying to be uh, cheerful about there being a back compatibility with everything. And the uh, disturbing number of uh, lectures and uh, examples that we use uh, get changed across the uh, different versions. So a lot of the things that we that used to work four or five years ago are not working on in this version of the uh, Windows Server, although they used to work because things like VHD became VHD, uh, VHDX, so uh, something happened in the in the environment. Backwards compatibility officially exists. But when you try to run an older version of the script, you start scratching, it, 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 it doesn't work. In Linux, uh, they, get, uh, they get out of the way to create older versions of the functions and everything else. Uh, they are uh, going to declare them dep deprecated, but they're going to create a version of the script that is going always to work. So they're going to uh, basically create aliases, create uh, different versions of the parameters and so on. So to enable your older uh, scripts to work. This is the same thing with the VI and VIM. Um, uh, many B commands on Linux, many, Unix, many whatever. Yes, so they are basically areas to uh, something else. Add user, user add, and so on. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's intentional. They are trying to uh, retain back compatibility. In Microsoft, it seems like the back compatibility is something that they are doing on paper, 
But then when it comes to actually running a command, it doesn't work. And I have seen it many times, and this is a problem. Okay, I have another one. Because I want a script that is going to run for 10, for 10 years. I don't want my script to break when every new version of Windows Server or comes. Other, or an update or something. Yes. Yeah. I have a, a second example for this, which I don't know. I don't know how, how, how to go about this without getting very angry, but it is what it is. Let's start with the simple things. Let's say that you have a, a Windows 10 client that you want to use as an administrator to hook up to your Hyper-V environment and VMware environment. Let's say that you okay. have both. I have clients like that. So actually, our company uses that as well. There is a new dash VM PowerShell commandlet for both of them. Okay. How are we going to do that uh, in our Windows 10 machine? And the correct question is, uh, the correct answer is, either we are going to deploy, let's say, PowerCLI, uh, VMware's uh, PowerShell extension, to a separate directory, so that it doesn't clash with the Hyper-V one, or we are going to have force one over the other. Okay. Because in no way, shape, or form, you can have both of them, obviously, in the same directory. It's impossible. They have vastly different, of course, net, uh, .NET backends, then you can use the Hyper-V version for Hyper-V only and, of course, the PowerCLI version for VR only. We are in the 21st century. You people cannot, can't you just work it out? Like new Hyper-V VM, new VMware VM, something, unique name, do not put us through that. And th this is not the only example, of course. I think that they know where this comes from. Do you remember b back way then when people were trying to create web pages? Yeah. The first thing that they needed to do was to uh, find out which browser you're using and then uh, work around all the bugs in the browser. Mm -hmm. So basically, they created a web page that said, if you're using uh, Internet Explorer 3, then uh, use this, or Explorer 4, use this. That's still or there 5. Up to this very day. Yes. I think that we have come to a point where you're going to uh, start creating scripts that are going to say, if you're using PowerShell in version 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, whatever, uh, or whatever the name of the PowerShell right now is, because I i don't know if it's, if it's core, if it's pow Microsoft it is PowerShell. Core. No, it's, it's core, yeah. I think it's PowerShell now, just PowerShell. No, it's based on .NET Core, but yeah, it's yes, PowerShell. Yes, yes, yes. 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 But so you're going to start uh, having a header that is going to try to find out where it is running in, what is the environment, and then try to uh, s work around all the problems and create the aliases for the commands that you're trying to use. You don't know this, actually, but you c perfectly su summarized my fir first encounter with PowerShell. Yes, I know. Because it was I back way, but then when the PowerShell 2 and 3 were uh, running. When I had uh, an environment that used 2003, 2008, R2, and 2012, and I was g uh, creating a script to connect to all of those servers via PowerShell remoting, to get some information from the event log. Okay. And I had to do exactly that. Yes, I know. It pissed, it, 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 it pissed it was, the it hell was, out of it me. It was the biggest difference. Uh, it was the differences between uh, PowerShell 1, 2, and 3 uh, because they came out... Uh, the, the .NET backend was different. Yeah, yeah yes, but they, 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 came out, uh, they came out pretty quickly. One after, one, the, one other. after the other. And people who were doing the scripting didn't expect that the differences between different version of PowerShell are going to be so huge. Mm -hmm. So they didn't uh, plan in advance to have uh, a system to try to detect which version you're running in. Because in normal scripting languages, a change like this takes years. So you don't change the name of the command with each version of the... No, this was worse. This was worse. It's, it was the same PowerShell commandlet, get event log. Yes. which had different options. Okay, so you don't change the commands between versions. You uh, you uh, give the advance warning, you create a deprecated message, you get that message uh, running for the next five or six versions, and then you deprecate the... Thank you for mentioning that, because uh, this is actually something that VMware does pretty well. Uh, they have their own you know, shortfalls and falls and whatnots. But uh, let's say in the past couple of years, they changed some uh, options for uh, virtual networking and uh, virtual switches and whatnot. And they explicitly 
are uh, leaving the old option active and they're outputting this option is going to be deprecated in one of the future versions, use this switch instead, which I like very much. That's, that's the way in which it should be done. Especially having in mind that in most use cases that I've seen so far in PowerCLI, when they are exchanging something for something, the syntax is the same. Which is, yes. which is as user-friendly as it can be. As I said, I'm talking with my friend here uh, at the same time, and I asked the chat GPT basically to give me an example of a script that is working in PowerShell on Windows Server 2019 and not working in the latest version of the server. Uh, it didn't even flick, uh, flicker a bit uh, before it started to uh, giving me an example. Example is trivial. It says the storage spaces direct uh, are obsolete in Windows Server 2022. So any mention of uh, 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 any mention of spa uh, storage spaces direct is going to result with an error. <coughs> and so uh, people know about this problem. If I can ask an AI to give me an example of a script that is not going to work across different versions of the server, and it comes with the solution uh, almost immediately, this is a problem. I don't think that they discontinued it, so I think it's feeding you the wrong information, but maybe I'm, maybe I'm lost here. I don't think that it, they discontinued it, so that might be a flop on ChatGPT side, which so we've seen. What we did, what, what we did say at, uh, about uh, live demoing uh, solutions. <laughs> That's excellent, <laughs> but I would never use ChatGPT as a source <laughs> for that, so thank you for that. Uh, it's a good backend, but no. Now, I think that um, uh, I, I did not see that Microsoft announced that they are discontinuing storage uh, spaces direct. Although, if I can be so bold to be quite honest and say they should. It shouldn't be, have been existed at all. No, no, no. They, it should exist, but they should have st started the development of that five years pri prior and created a freaking GUI to do it. Okay. Because most of the most of the stuff that you do in uh, storage spaces and storage spaces direct, if you want to actually work with it on a daily basis in production, you have to PowerShell. Yes, I know. Yes, I know. And a bunch of stuff that you can do in uh, some uh, the SMB uh, protocol, it's a bunch of stuff that you can do on the NTFS and so on. There is a lot of things that you cannot do through GUI. Mm -hmm. And the uh, I don't necessarily mind that, but for uh, long-term uh, maintenance and administration, I think GUI is preferable. But for example, uh, the duplication should be an uh, option somewhere in the, in the GUI. If compression is, uh, the duplication should be. I think that there was, but I'm, maybe I'm just mixing up I some stuff. Able to, I wasn't like, able to find it. If somebody knows where the no, no, actually, it's uh, uh, if you if you're talking about start the dedupe and yes. stuff like that, they were correct. Yes. Nothing to add there. So, uh, so uh, we are coming back to consistency, and different uh, <laughs> different people doing different things. Uh, uh, Windows Eleven, mm -hmm. Windows Eleven context menu. Uh, a context menu seems to be done by three different groups. <laughs> one, one, one group was doing the design for the uh, context menu, and they wanted to see a context menu that's going to be pristine. Mm -hmm. So, on this menu, when you press the right uh, mouse button, it looks amazing. It's completely consistent with the uh, UI. Uh, but they had the problem because people tend to use the context menu for the uh, comments. So mm -hmm. uh, some some people wanted to have some comments in the context menu because they want to do something in the context. Mm -hmm. So there is a show more options option that is going to show up in a different UI uh, because this is going to be the old UI from the Windows 10. And then after you click there, you're going to end up with, for example, for in properties, in some instances, you're going to end up with the... A UI that is uh, basically uh, grandfathered in from the previous versions of Windows, basically up to the Windows NT. So <laughs> you can end up with the you can end up with the property dialog box uh, that is as old as Windows, <laughs> and this is the thing that is the that is the problem. The main beef that I have with the Microsoft and the way that PowerShell is being done and everything, almost everything else that the Microsoft is, is doing, is that sometimes I think that they are just warring factions trying to uh, call themselves the same company. So the PowerShell mm -hmm. itself is an okay uh, scripting language. It's I, more than okay, but okay. Uh, okay, okay. It has its own inconsistencies, but let's let's call it okay. Uh, while at the same time they are pushing for a Windows subsystem for Linux, mm -hmm. so you can use Bash normally under under Windows. Uh, this is more or less completely inconsistent with what uh, PowerShell is doing. Uh, 
mm-hmm. uh, they are pushing for pro- multiple search engines for whatever parts of the Windows they are cu- currently trying to develop. Mm-hmm. They are at the same time pushing for the cloud and for the on-premise uh, solution while the on-premise solution is getting worse. Mm-hmm. The cloud is not getting better. Okay. Uh, right now, they are at the same time trying to uh, do something on the gaming market. Okay. Yeah. Uh, there was a, today there was a big announcement that they are uh, they cannot buy Activision. Did, did you see this? I didn't, uh, but I knew that they were trying to. Yes. So they basically the UK said that uh, Activision is not going to be uh, for market reasons is not going to be available to uh, to Microsoft. For so, monopoly reasons, probably. Yes. Yes. Okay. So so they didn't uh, explain completely, and I. To be sure, I, uh, to be completely co- uh, correct, I didn't uh, pay too much attention to it. Mm-hmm. But Microsoft is doing so many things at the same time, and sometimes I don't see the what the big idea is, what the scenario is. So okay. pa- PowerShell is being pushed, but at the same time, Bash is being pushed, and Linux is being pushed, and compatibility is being pushed, and cloud is being so everything is being pushed as a new uh, pr- uh, product. And okay. and suddenly you don't know what the what the priorities are. I remember from one of our, our previous conversations that you were very upset or very, let's say, ticked off by the fact that their UIs are inconsistent, PowerShell inc- inconsistencies. I think we've we've covered and we've shown them uh, as as a part of the episode as well. It basically, uh, I remember more than once you said this company is like the left hand doesn't know what the right hand is doing. As I said, the warring factions. So basically, each team has its own goals. Each team is pushing for their goals to be met. Each team is pushing for their part of the product to be pushed, uh, to be uh, published and uh, released. But at the same time, there is nobody at the helm trying to uh, understand how this thing looks like from the perspective of the user. You need you need a Geppetto. No, I'm not the puppet master. I'm going. I'm going to be completely fine with somebody who is going to say this is inconsistent. Please let not not ship it before it be, it becomes consistent. So at least try to make things look close to each other. So UI should be looking. Um, I wouldn't call. Uh, let's not talk about consistent AI. Uh, UI. UI. Uh, let's talk about uh, uh, consistent-ish. Uh, the UI because <laughs> r- r- right right now we have UIs from the almost all the generations of Windows available mm. in this in the same product. You are Which not, one? Windows 11? Yes, because you're not That's seeing awesome. this. You are just uh, you are just one. I'm a lowly Windows 10 user. Yes, you are lonely. Uh, you are a lowly uh, Windows 10 user, but you are missing one uh, generation of that uh, upon the Windows 10 UI. <laughs> so your UI is more consistent than your UI in the Windows 11. Uh, Here's the reason why my why my computer is more consistent than yours. Okay, but uh, inconsistency and uh, entropy is something that I'm uh, I'm good at. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, so this, it's this, the this left and the uh, left and the right si- right side of the brain in in your metaphor are your Microsoft. Yes. So, <laughs> so but but this is the reason why Microsoft is uh, bothering me because I understand. But that's perfect for you. You just said that you like that. No, I don't like that because I understand what the what the idea behind it is. Mm-hmm. So uh, I see that the inconsistencies are basically a problem that should be addressed. But why? It, it makes your life so much more interesting. You can get pissed off at things every single day. You can connect to uh, your, I don't know, online uh, platform and have your camera not working one day, your audio not working the second day, both of them not working the third day. It's Your life is much more interesting that way. Mm, yes, especially with your be- perfect Behringer Behringer so audio card. So may, may you may you live in interesting times, but sometimes <laughs> yes. sometimes this is not the way that I want to uh, work. Sometimes I want a device that actually works. Sometimes I want a, a shell uh, scripting language that is consistent and working. Excuse sometimes, me, sometimes, professor. Sometimes. sometimes, sometimes. Yes, just sometimes. Yes. Sometimes you just want to you want to have a box of chocolates and uh, see what is going to come up. I saved a life today. You don't know about this uh, because okay. you weren't here. Okay. A colleague of ours was uh, coming from hospital, so we had some, uh, you know, 
diagnostic things that he needed to do. So he couldn't eat in the morning. Oh, okay. And he knocked on my door and said, please save me, please save me, tell me that you have some chocolate. And I just bought some, uh, brought some uh, chocolate yesterday. Put okay. it in the drawer and made him very happy. Okay, so and I gave him a croissant as well, just like I gave you a donut. Okay. Mr. Mr. Cop. So, so on. <laughs> no, no, no bombshell. No, no, no bombshell. But uh, on this note, that uh, we have a huge uh, source of uh, sugary things, uh, carbohydrates. Yes, in uh, here in, in form of you. Oh. Let's let's wrap this thing up and say that PowerShell is a good thing. PowerShell is immensely uh, powerful, but at the same time. It's inconsistent. As inconsistent, it could be. Uh, I think it's inconsistent enough to be annoying, mm -hmm. but at the same time, uh, consistent enough to be usable. Uh, to kind of like further or counter your point at the same time, I don't know which one, but it's a very good tool. In my case, in in the video, as you saw, it's a very good tool to end up looking like a pillock. But this is just you trying to do live demos without uh, testing them. That, that, that's yeah, the, the fact that I did that demo 100 times before has no merit, right? Yes, because it's Microsoft. Uh, Mr. Troll, Linux fan. Every, every uh, Page Tuesday means that you need to reconsider <laughs> whatever you did before. Please now like, turn that advice to yourself as well. Okay, I'm, I'm going to be fine <laughs> with this. As long as you know your limitations, you're fine. Mm, okay. Okay. So, thank you for being here. Uh, thank you for uh, keeping up with us. Uh, see you next time. Yeah. Bye.